with AYC Group. Today we're going to talk about troubleshooting your towel steamer. So let's go over a couple of common problems that we have. Um, if you notice the light does not come on, just unplug your unit, wait 10 seconds, and then plug back in. That should correct the problem. Another common problem is that sometimes we have complaints about the towel smelling funny or having a bad odor. Um, most of the time that's caused by using chemicals or fragrances in your towels. So you want to make sure you remove them all and wash them with water. No bleach or chemicals. Um, another way to remove that smell or stop that from happening rather is to leave your door open after it's done steaming. Just let it dry out that way. Um, another common problem is if you notice your unit is leaking, primarily from the back of the unit, you may have too much water in there. If the light on top of the unit comes on, it is full of water. Please do not add any more until the low water light comes on. Another problem you might have is if you notice that the water is low, primarily around the heating element on the inside. Um, if this, if the water is not coming up above the heating element and it's not giving you the water low light, then you will probably need to simply clean your black tube. So I went ahead and loosened these screws down here just to remove this front panel. It's just as easy as sliding the tube out, rinsing it with hot water, and just flushing it through. You can also massage the piece if you need to if there's debris stuck inside. Just make sure you flush this and rinse it thoroughly with water. And then you just simply place it back inside. The next thing we're going to go over is how to change out your heating element. Now you should not need to do this on a regular basis, but just in case something happens where you do, the way that you'll do this is you will first come and remove this screw that's in the middle of the heating element just so that we can get this sensor out. So we're using a 10 millimeter socket. Simply unscrew this, remove the plate so that you can pull out the sensor. Next, we're going to move to the back of the unit. Okay, so the next step in removing the heating element is now normally there's a little window in the back. So we've removed this panel just to make it easier for you to see. We're going to remove the small screws using a 9 30 seconds socket. And just be very careful not to drop these tiny pieces down in here. We're going to have first one small screw followed by two washers. And another small screw. And then we will move on from there. And don't be concerned if you if you mix up these terminals, the fork terminals that are in here, um, it does not matter which side they are on. They will work on both sides. So again, using the same socket to remove the smaller screw. You're going to do this for both sides. Alright, so the next screws we need to remove would be, I'm going to use a 17 millimeter socket for this, but we're going to remove these large screws behind here. the same thing for the other side. Alright, so now we can go to the other side, back to the inside of the unit, and pull this out. Okay, so now we're ready to remove our heating element. We've removed all of the screws from the back side and we've removed our sensor from inside the unit. So we're simply gonna pull this out. Just be careful not to catch it on the wire of your sensor. And now you're ready to put in your new one. So now that we're ready to put in our new heating element, the first thing we're gonna do is simply slide it into place 
is put in the two terminals through the holes in the back of the unit. I'm just going to bring this sensor back up so that we can get it back into our heating element. So again, using a 10 millimeter socket, we're just simply going to unscrew that little screw so we can remove the plate. Replacing the sensor. Tighten it. All right, so now I'm going to show you how to properly replace those screws in the back of the unit. All right, so once you have your replacement heating element installed into your unit, and all that's left is to replace the screws and the fork terminal in the back. So just to give you um, a better visual aid, I'm just going to show you quickly here how to do so. So you want to make sure that your washers and screws are in exactly this order just as you took them off. You're going to start with the large washer and then the large screw. Now you'll need to tighten each one of these individually. Uh, the large washer, you'll need a 17 millimeter socket. And then the next part will be the small screw, the first small screw, which is 9 30 seconds socket. Simply get that on there. Followed by the two washers. Now in between these two washers is where you're going to put the forks of your terminal. Now that's the wires hanging down from the back of the unit with a bread, I'm sorry, with a blue wire. With the fork terminal, you're simply going to put those two prongs in between these washers to make sure that it has a good connection. And then the final piece will be the remaining small screw. Next, we're going to talk about how to adjust and clean your water sensors. All right, so here we are at the back of the towel steamer, and now we're going to look at our water level sensors. Depending on how often you use your steamer, you may need to clean this between two and six months. And the way you can tell is just by simply removing the sensors from the back. And just look at them. These are obviously clean, but in order to clean yours, you just simply use water, and then if needed, you can use sandpaper to simply get any residue off of there. When you're replacing the sensors, there are two. You'll notice one right behind it. You just want to make sure that you put these all the way back in, because if they are not back in all the way, they will not detect the water, and so your water levels will not be correct. If you have any questions, as always, feel free to call us. Thanks for watching.